In today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at Filmora's timeline. Now, everything that happens to your videos from start to finish take place in the timeline. And we're going to learn how to work with the timeline and make our editing experience better. By the end of this lesson, you're going to know how to work with the timeline, learn the proper shortcuts, and finally keep your timeline organized for heavier projects. Now, we already learned some things about the timeline. We know how to split, trim, copy, and paste, but there is still a lot more to the timeline than what we learned. So let's review what we learned. This right here is the timeline, this large box right here. On the left, we have the tracks, which we have two parts of tracks. We have video tracks and audio tracks. Video tracks contain your videos, your elements, your titles. Audio tracks contain your music, your soundtrack, and any other audio. So basically anything that's visible with the eye goes in the video track, and anything that's not visible goes in the audio track. Let's go ahead and import something. Just drag this to my timeline. Match it to media. I'm gonna keep project setting. You can also add to your timeline by hitting this button. And there we go. It came all the way to video track three. Now your video tracks are labeled by numbers. So we have video track one, two, three, four, and it just goes on until uh, the end of your video tracks. For audio, you can just select that audio and drag it to your timeline. But this time it will go on the audio track because music is not something that we see. So let's take a look at what we have over here. As we said, these are the labels of your tracks, but next to it, we have some icons. We have this volume icon, which means that I can mute this audio track by clicking this. And above it for video, we have an eyeball, which means that if it's as it is, I can see my video, but if I click on it, but if I click on it, it will be invisible. Let's say I have a title. I'm going to put it right here. Below it, I will put an element. Let's put this heart element. Now, if I go over here, I'm seeing this title. And I want to edit this element first. So that's when the eyeball comes in handy. I can turn off the visibility for this video track. And that way I'm able to just uh, customize this element. But doing this will not delete my element. It's still there. If I bring this back, turn it back on, you can see that uh, it's still there. So I did not delete it. I just, uh, I just turned off the visibility so I can just customize my element underneath. And for audio, you can do the same. So this is without the button turned on. And now if I turn this on, play this back, there is no audio because I have removed the audio from this audio track. And then finally, we have the lock icon. The lock allows me to keep something in place, prevents me from putting random things on it, for example. So we have this video track right here. I can move this freely and move it around my timeline. But if I lock this track, I cannot move this anymore. And I cannot put anything uh, in that video. So if I grab an effect, you can see that it's not going on this track, but on the ones below or above it. But if I unlock this, drag this over here, I can put it on this video. So by locking your video tracks, you can uh, prevent them from being moved around or prevent yourself from putting an effect on it by accident. We have the same option for audio. So if I don't lock this, I can move this around on different audio tracks. Keep in mind that audio tracks are always below video tracks. And if you want to make extra ones, you would have to go underneath. And just by dragging this down, I made another audio track. So now I have three instead of one. But if I lock this in place, I cannot move it and I cannot do anything with it. I cannot double click to 
add some, uh, maybe change the pitch of the audio. I cannot do anything to it unless I unlock this audio track. Then I can just double click and make some changes. All right, and let's say you made extra tracks like we made right here. I have some tracks that are empty and I just have no need for them. You can easily delete tracks one by one by selecting them and then hitting the trash icon. Like so, number nine is gone. Let's select number eight, trash icon, seven, and I can just delete as I go. If I want to add an audio or video track, I can one, just select that thing and just bring it up where there is no tracks. Let go and I have a track. Same thing for audio. Select it, bring it down where there isn't a track and you can make a new track. So instead of three, we have four. Another way is to head over to this plus icon right here. Add video, which means you're going to add a video track. Add audio, which means that you're going to add an audio track. One audio track, one video track. We have an option for delete empty tracks. So as you can see, I only have four elements, but I have a lot of empty tracks. Instead of selecting and deleting them individually, I can just head over here, delete empty tracks. So now I have enough tracks for my uh, elements. I do not have any extra tracks, which keeps my work organized. Let's come back here. We have adjust track height. Let's select track number three. There we go. You can see how big this is. Let's select the second one, make it small. There we go. It's pretty small and this is medium. So if I were to just go back to this one, I can just select this uh, track, head over to this, make it normal. It will be the same size as everything else. So if something is really important, maybe you can change the track height to prioritize it. And the things that aren't as important, you can make them small. Let's go over here. Uh, you can delete a selected track. So right now we selected number three. I can delete it like so or hit this icon. And now there's something else over here, which is called track manager. So when you're working with small projects, having that many tracks is not really necessary. Let's say you need more than 15 tracks for your important project. Making them one by one can be very tiresome. So there is a thing called track manager for that for those situations. Let's check it out. Open track manager. And now we're getting this window. So you can say how much you want to add. Right now we have three video tracks, so I can choose how much more I want. Let's write 15. And then the placement. So do I want them to be below track one or above track one or above my uh, element or text actually, which would be track three. So I want it to be above track three, above everything else that I already made. Select that. We have the same option for audio tracks. So I'm going to make 15 audio tracks and here I can choose it to be above track one. Hit OK. And now you can see we have 16 audio files and uh, 15 video tracks, but we already had three. So now it's 18. There we go. And as you can see, the new ones are above video track three, just like we asked. And the new audio tracks are below audio track one. So you can use the audio track manager if you want to get a large number of tracks. But if not, you can always just make them one by one. It all depends on how many tracks you need. Let's go ahead and uh, delete the empty tracks. There we go. So I have four tracks one audio and three video. All right, now let's take a look at the other parts of our timeline. This orange thing right here is the playhead. Wherever it lands on is where you're going to play the video. So right now I'm on 15 seconds. You can see right here and over here. Move it back to 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. 
And as we learned, if I want to add something with the from my media tab, it will add right after this playhead. So on the right side of my playhead, so let's go to stock media and just add this, hit this plus icon, and it will be placed on the right side of my playhead. Command Z, Control Z. Let's try here. And now it's going to move over here. So wherever you place this, you will make the new media go to the right side of this. Let's delete this. And in the previous lesson, we learned how to replace media. Let's just uh, revise that. You can replace media by holding down Command Option on Mac or Control Shift Alt on Windows. Select your uh, previous media, hold down those keys drag it onto the old uh, media, let go. And now you have placed the media in the exact spot where the old media was without having to uh, maybe reapply the effects and all that. Let's try that again, but let's put some uh, effects on this video first. Let's make it black and white. I'm just piling up different uh, filters. And there we go. If I double click on this media, I have, we have one, two, three, four, five different effects on this video. So now let's say I changed my mind and I don't want this video, but I still want these effects. I can easily replace the media and keep the effects as they are. Again, hold down command and option at the same time if you are on Mac. But if you're on Windows, hold down Control, Alt, and Shift at the same time. Select your old video, hold down the keys, and drag the new video right on top. Let go, and my new video has all those effects, so let's double click. And there we go, we indeed have one, two, three, four, five. Let's hit OK. We also learned about Ripple in the previous lessons. And you can use Ripple to make your editing experience smoother. We learned that Ripple gets rid of the extra space between clips when you trim and split your videos. Let's move this guy right here. I'm going to place a new video right here that is short enough to fit. It's a bit too long. Let's just put an image. I'm going to put one right here. Just make it as long as uh, until it reaches this area. Now, right here, we have the ripple option. If I turn this off, this is off, this is on. If I turn this off and I go to this image and maybe change the duration, instead of 12 seconds, let's go for five, hit okay this space is created. And if I don't have auto ripple on, I have to just select, I have to select this box and hit backspace and just bring the second video back. Or I could just drag this one over here. So this creates extra work for me. Let's hit control Z. But if I had auto ripple turned on, let's go back. Let's turn this back on and do that again. Select the image. Turn this back to five seconds. The video, the new video is brought to the new duration. So I didn't have to uh, work with that extra space between my two clips. Filmora did that for me because of auto ripple. So if I'm working with a lot of media and I'm speeding things up, I'm trimming them, I'm splitting them, turning auto ripple on really helps me out because I don't have to work with that extra space and get rid of it manually. You can zoom into your timeline to see things better with these two icons. Go to this side, it minimizes the timeline. Go to this side, it zooms it in until the maximum amount, which is this much. You can also click this bar right here that has the numbers. Go left to minimize, right to maximize. And let's say I've zoomed into the maximum amount to check something, uh, a small detail on my clips. If I want to bring it back, instead of hitting this until I have the right 
um, the right amount of zoom, I can just click a button, this button right here, and it will bring it back in a way that I'm seeing everything to its full length. Now, because our audio is this long, we're getting all of this space. Let me just uh, split my audio and then hit this icon again. And there we go. So just by hitting that button, you are going to snap your timeline to the length of your footage. The uh, shorter your footage is, the, uh, the more zoomed in your timeline will be. So instead of having all this extra space, I can hit this button and just work with the things that I have on my timeline. You can also mark things on your timeline and indicate different parts on your footage where you want to add an effect or add a text. Let's say at this part of my image, let's actually replace this. Select the footage command option, bring this right here. At this part of my video, I want a text. Instead of remembering what duration this is, I can hit M on my keyboard. And just with that, I can uh, select it like this to bring my playhead exactly at that moment where I can, let's say, put a element right here. So this will happen right where I want it to. Let's mute this. This will happen right where I decide it. And this way I can make sure that it's not a second late or a second over. Now let's learn about Filmora shortcuts. Shortcuts are keys on your keyboard that you can press to get a different result. For example, we know some of the shortcuts such as the undo shortcut, which is Control Z or Command Z. But there are many more, so let's see where we can customize those shortcuts. If you are on Mac, that would be Wondershare Filmora 11, Keyboard Shortcuts, but if you are on Windows, then you need to go to File and then Keyboard Shortcuts. Select that to get the Keyboard Shortcuts window, where you can change the shortcuts to your preference. So we have File, where you get to maybe open a project, save it, archive, and all that. We have Edit, where you get to change the shortcut of, your, um, of things that are related to editing, such as Undo, Copy, Paste, copy effect and all that. We have tools right here, uh, view and other things. So to change these shortcuts, I can select this box right here. And instead of typing it, you just select that key that you want to be the new shortcut. So I'm going to hold down shift B for this at the same time. And I got shift B click away. And now this is my new shortcut. If I wanted to go back to the original shortcut, I can just hit this, but I'm happy with this. And once you want to um, put it into effect, you can hit OK. Now let's try it out on this title. I'm going to hold down Shift B and there we go. I have split it this element. So it's important to know your shortcuts and working with shortcuts can speed up your editing process. So I highly recommend going to the shortcut window to customize the keys that you would use for those effects. And that's how you can use Filmora's timeline to make your editing more organized and more efficient. Let's move on to the next lesson where we will learn about the preferences that you can put to get a smoother editing experience.